Good evening. The aftermath of Galvan is continuing to dominate all attention and all the headlines, and that's that's the way it should be. Um, we've had the Congress leader Rahul Gandhi coming out and questioning why Indian soldiers were allowed to walk into an ambush unarmed. Uh, to which the external affairs minister has said that they were actually armed. Uh, all uh, soldiers on the border do carry arms, but they didn't use the weapons because of the protocols that exist. And if that if that story is really correct, then you have to think about the discipline uh, of those soldiers, the discipline and the courage of those soldiers that they came under attack with by Chinese soldiers wielding clubs and barbed wires and stones, and they had guns. But they didn't use them and they didn't fire back. Now, as we continue to piece together what exactly happened at Galwan, one piece of information did come from the Indian Army saying that no Indian soldiers are actually missing right now. And that, I guess, is a source of some relief. Also, continuing discussion in India as to how best to react to China. The fact that there's going to be a certain amount of resetting of relations with China almost seems certain. We've seen a lot of anger from people calling for a boycott of, of Chinese goods. We did hear at least one somewhat well, strange remark from a government minister saying that boycott Chinese food, which is somewhat strange because most Chinese food in India is actually Indian Chinese and besides it's made by Indian cooks using Indian ingredients. Um, so I'm not sure what the point of the boycott is. But more meaningfully, we've started to see some um, contracts, for example, being cancelled, the railways uh, cancelling one particular contract with a Chinese company. So we'll have to see how this goes forward and what the long-term repercussions of Galwana are going to be. Here are all the big stories of the day. India on Thursday reiterated that China tried to change the status quo along the line of actual control unilaterally while the two countries were engaged in diplomatic and military level talks to resolve the standoff at the border. The Ministry of External Affairs again asserted that all activities were conducted within the Indian territory. The Chinese side departed from the consensus to respect the LAC in the Galwan Valley. On the late evening and, nine, and night of 15th June 2020, a violent face-off happened when the Chinese side unilaterally attempted to change the status quo there. They took premeditated and planned action. Given its responsible approach to border management, India is very clear that all activities are always within the Indian side of the LAC. Responding to Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who had asked the government as to why Indian soldiers who were killed in Ladakh clashes were unarmed, Minister of External Affairs S. Jay Shankar on Wednesday said all troops on border duty carry arms, especially while leaving their posts. He said those troops posted at Galwan Valley on the 15th of June also carried arms, but there was a long-standing practice as per the agreements in 1996 and 2005 to not use firearms during face-offs. Earlier, Rahul had trained guns at the Narendra Modi government, questioning who sent the soldiers unarmed and also asked who was responsible for their deaths. Training guns at the Narendra Modi government and questioning who sent the soldiers unarmed and asking who was responsible for their deaths, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has said, China has committed a big mistake by killing the unarmed Indian soldiers. चीन ने हिंदुस्तान के शस्त्रहीन सैनिकों की हत्या करके एक बहुत बड़ा अपराध किया है मैं पूछना चाहता हूं इन वीरों को बिना हथियार खतरे की ओर किसने भेजा और क्यों भेजा कौन जिम्मेदार है the attack by the Congress leader continued for the second consecutive day. On Wednesday, he questioned Prime Minister Narendra Modi's silence on the killing of Indian soldiers in Galwan Valley. India has rejected Chinese Foreign Ministry's claim on the Galwan Valley, asserting that this was exaggerated and untenable. In a sharp rebuttal late on Wednesday night, New Delhi also reminded Beijing about the phone conversation between the foreign ministers of the two countries, who'd agreed that the overall situation should be handled in a responsible manner. Making exaggerated and untenable claims is contrary to this understanding, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastav said in his rebuttal released around midnight. 
Amid the ongoing row with China in eastern Ladakh, the Indian Air Force is pushing a proposal to the government for acquiring 33 new fighter aircraft, including 21 MiG-29s and 12 Sukhoi-30 MKIs from Russia, as per reports. This addition to India's firepower is an emergency purchase by the Indian Air Force and is worth over 6,000 crore rupees. ANI reports that the proposal would be placed before the Defence Ministry for its final approval next week at a high-level meeting. China has said that India must not underestimate its firm will to safeguard its territorial sovereignty. The comments were made by Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson on Twitter. She said in her first tweet that India must not misjudge the current situation or underestimate China's firm will to safeguard its territorial sovereignty. She claimed in a follow-up tweet that Indian frontline troops broke the consensus and crossed the line of actual control, deliberately provoking and attacking Chinese soldiers and officers, thus triggering fierce physical conflicts and causing casualties. The remarks come a day after the External Affairs Ministry rubbished Chinese military's claim of sovereignty over the Galwan Valley in eastern Ladakh. As tensions run high after the violent clash in Ladakh that left 20 Indian soldiers dead, a first set of actions have been initiated against Chinese businesses in the country. A Chinese engineering major has lost a significant contract with the Indian Railways, which has cancelled Delhi Meerut's semi-high-speed rail corridor owing to what it said was poor performance. On June 12th, the Chinese firm Shanghai Tunnel Engineering Company was the lowest bidder for the 5.6-kilometer-long tunnel to be built as part of the 82 km long Delhi Ghaziabad Meerut corridor. State run telecom giants BSNL and MTNL, on the other hand, have been instructed by the Department of Telecom to stop using equipment supplied by Chinese companies like ZTE and Huawei. Amid tensions with China on Ladakh border and boycott China calls, Union Minister Ramdas Atavale has opened a front against Chinese food. The minister has demanded a ban on restaurants selling Chinese food and has called on people to boycott Chinese food. Earlier, the minister had made news for chanting Go Corona Go slogans against the coronavirus. Chinese hotels, Chinese restaurants, I think the restaurant per Pabandi Lagani Chai. और चाइनीज रेस्टोरेंट चलाने वालों ने चाइनीज रेस्टोरेंट बंद करना चाहिए सरकार ने उनको इसी तरह आदेश देना चाहिए और चाइनीज फूड खाने वाले लोगों को भी मेरा आह्वान है निवेदन है नम्र विनती है कि उन्होंने ऐसे वक्त पर जिन्होंने हमारे 20 नौ जवानों को शहीद किया है हमारी छेड़छाड़ की है हमारा अपमान करने का काम किया है ऐसे चाइना के जो फूड है उस पर भी सभी लोगों ने बहिष्कार डालना चाहिए a day after inconclusive talks over the face-off on the line of actual control, a major general of the Indian Army is holding talks with Chinese military officers at Galwan Valley, media reports said. The talks are being held in the Galwan Valley where violent clashes between India and Chinese soldiers took place on Monday night. At the moment, there are no signs of the Chinese disengaging from the area, reports said, quoting sources. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that he was deeply grateful after India was elected unopposed as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Deeply grateful for the overwhelming support shown by the global community for India's membership of the UN Security Council. India will work with all member countries to promote global peace, security, resilience and equity, Prime Minister Modi tweeted.